Hello and welcome to the third episode of Jax Does Homestuck. I'm Jackie, aka Jax, aka Socially Anxious Dragon, and um, like I said in the last episode, we're about to get into some sound, so go ahead and join me on page 002036, um, and I'll still try to update saying like, hey, this is the page with sound, blah 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 blah, but I mean, really a lot of this probably doesn't make a whole bunch of sense unless you are reading along with me anyway. So, um, uh, yeah, let's get started. Since this is all just sound, I'm just going to let you, um, well, I mean, it's sound and video, and I'm just going to let you watch this part yourself, and I'll, I'll move on. And here we have, um, another interactive section. So play around with that. And you are now TT. Select magic chest. Zoom out. Drop chest. EB. Whoa, what are you doing? TT. Sorry, I'm just getting a feel for the controls. EB. Is my magic chest on the roof now? TT. Yes. EB, sad face. TT, I will try to be more careful next time. John, get the card. You find your missing stack fetch modus and quickly reapply it to your silodex. You can now opt for either the stack or Q modus any time. You toggle between your fetch modi with gleeful abandon. It looks like your dad is leaving again for more baking supplies. You're relieved to have the house to yourself again, if only for a few minutes. You just hope he doesn't notice the magic chest on the roof, or all the shit you threw out the window for that matter. TT. Select stuff in yard and move it back into room. EB. Hey, do you think you could do me a favor? Can you grab all the stuff outside my broken window and bring it in for me? TT. I'll give it a shot. EB. Thanks. TT. No luck. It appears to be out of range. I'm guessing it is too far from you, the player. EB, sad face. TT, select John. You cannot select a player. John abjures to the meddlesome cursor. Select bunny. Put the bunny back in the box. Revise room. Open Fernalia Registry. Deploy Totem Lathe. Examine Totem Lathe. You don't know what the heck this thing does, but it looks neat. Open Grist Cache. TT. It seems expanding the dimensions of your room cost us some build grist, but deploying the lathe did not appear to incur any expense. It looks like certain objects are freebies, probably to help you set up the game. EB. Wow, okay. What do they do? TT. I think it's up to you to find out. All I can do is drop stuff in your house and move it around, apparently. EB. How do I move stuff around? It sounds fun. TT. I don't think you can as the client. You will need to install the server application. You should have received both in separate envelopes. I am running both on my computer right now. EB, what? TT, did you get another envelope in the mail? EB, no! TT, once you install the server and establish a connection, I'm sure you will be able to manipulate my environment in the same manner. TT, are you sure you didn't get it? EB, oh man, I think I might know where it is. TT, now that your room is bigger, why don't you move to the far corner? It will extend the range of the cursor, and I can reach the items, which you threw out the window for some reason? EB, good idea! TT, what have you been doing in here all afternoon anyway? EB, ugh, I was fussing with my ridiculous silodex, but I think I have it under control now. What modus do you use? TT, I like to use trees. EB, oh no, that sounds so awkward. TT, it's not exceptionally practical. But I think they are elegant. John, stand in corner. TT, deploy Cruxtruder. 
deploy alchemeter. Eb, why is the floor shaking? Are you dropping more stuff in my house? Tt, yes, two more large gizmos. Eb, sweet. What is with all these big contraptions? Tt, if I had to guess, they appear to facilitate a sort of system involving punch card based alchemy. Eb, huh? To what end? I mean, what are we supposed to be doing in this game? Tt, that remains to be seen. Maybe you should go investigate. Get PDA. Gray Slack sixty six. Need counsel on removing coffee from necktie. Incident occurred forty five seconds ago. Beverage essence rapidly s- settling into fabric. Too busy for this. Please elab on incident. Gray Slack sixty six. Was posturing unevenly for reach for hat on wall hook. To slipped an open mouth of pot. Duration of dunk approximately three seconds. Office Urchin 1280. Photographic documentation of incident. Well pressed attire. Use ballpoint pen to roll up tip of cloth. Extract pen. Press ruled cloth against ceramic surface, e.g. restroom sink. In future, consider repositioning hat hook and or coffee pot. Gray Slack 66. Decided to return home for fresh tie. Soil tie will be laundered immediately upon return. You grab the PDA, switching back to stack modus so it is readily accessible. The interference is oddly sterile. No hilarious clown wallpapers or anything like that. Oops, you mean harlequin wallpapers. The serious business application is open. It seems your dad uses it to keep tabs on various acquaintances. His fellow street performers, maybe? You guess the performing arts must be pretty serious business after all. Install Pester Chum. This should be useful. Now you can keep tabs on your chums while you wander around the house. Go out to balcony. E.B. Hey, I'm out on the balcony now. I am messaging from my dad's PDA. T.T. The one you threw into the yard? E.B. No, I am telling you, it jumped out of my saladex like a frightened weasel. T.T. What were you doing with it in the first place? I am not sensing a lot of regard for the personal property of others. Is this how your pent-up frustrations with your father manifest itself? E.B. What? No, those were all accidents. Please take your psycho babblery elsewhere, miss. T.T. Your bathroom is a mess. Did you do that too? E.B. Oh man, see, this isn't cool. All this snooping nonsense. T.T. There's a cake in the toilet. E.B. Yes, there is. T.T. I'm tempted to clean it for you. E.B. Okay, if that will satisfy your weird OCD complex, then go ahead. T.T. My obsessive-compulsive disorder complex? Can a disorder also be a complex? E.B. In your case, probably. T.T. Sounds complicated. E.B. Anyway, I'm going to have a look at this enormous platformy thing you put on the balcony. Examine Alchemeter in a cautious manner. You have no idea what to do with this thing. You can't find any controls for it. Having exhausted all other possibilities, you just decide to stand on it. This isn't very cautious of you, actually. Look through telescope. It's a clear, sunny day. Nothing out of the ordinary to report. At least, not beyond the walls of your own home. Grab the soiled toilet. T.T. Whoops! E.B. Whoops what? E.B. What was that noise? Is this something I should go investigate? T.T. No, I have it under control. You can keep playing with your telescope. Investigate. E.B. Ah! T.T. I think I can patch it up. Just give me a little space. Why don't you go have a look at the Cruxtruder? E.B. The what? T.T. The thing I put in your living room. Hop down the hole. You jump down to the utility room. Get sledgehammer and card. You take the sledgehammer and the capture log card, combine the two, and quickly apply it to your strife specibus. You think it's cool that things don't always have to be a federal fucking issue. It looks like another one of your chums is pestering you on your PDA. Answer chum. Garden Gnostic GG began pestering ectobiologist E.B. at 1725. GG. John, did you get my package? E.B. 
Oh, hey. No, not yet. Gigi. Darn, are you sure? It was in a green box. E.B. Oh! Yes, but it's in my dad's car, and he is still out at the store. He should be back soon. Gigi. Great! So what are you up to today? E.B. I'm up to my neck in this s stuff. T.T. is making a royal mess of my house. Gigi. LOL. What's s E.B. Oh, it's this game. It's okay, I guess. I'm still figuring it out. Gigi. Whoa, what was that? E.B. What was what? Gigi. There was a loud noise outside my house. It sounded like an explosion. E.B. Wow, really? Gigi. I will go outside and look. E.B. Oh, man, all right. Be careful, okay? Gigi. I will. Garden Gnostic ceased pestering ectobiologist at 1728. Might as well check out the crux truder. E.B. Oh, hell no. You put this thing in front of the door? T.T. There's the door there? E.B. Um, yeah? T.T. I didn't see it. I just thought it fit nicely into that groove. E.B. You mean you thought it was elegant? Okay, well, what do I do with this thing? Hello? What are you doing up there now? T.T. Oh, fuck. Examine wheel on crux trigger. When you turn the wheel, something seems to be pushing up from underneath the lid, but you weren't strong enough to make the lid come off. TT, put bathtub in driveway. On the tub's journey to the driveway, the connection is interrupted. John, scold TT. EB, you can see me, right? Tell me what is wrong with this picture. TT, sorry, I keep losing the wireless signal. Must be the weather. I would look for a stronger signal in another part of the house, but I'd rather not risk an encounter with my mother. I battled through her cloud of gin and derision once already this evening. E.B. Ha <laughs> ha, yeah, I hear you. T.T. Yes. Cake, gestures, unfaltering love and support. Quite a road to hoe there. Though I suppose I'm complicit for not informing social services about your situation. E.B. I know! What about going outside? Maybe you could catch a neighbor's signal. T.T. That presents the same problem. Also, it's raining, remember? And dark. E.B. It's dark already? T.T. Yes, the sun has already had its way with us here on the East Coast. Its lurid glare has moved on to younger time zones. E.B. Haha. <laughs> um, okay. Hit Cruxtruder with Sledgehammer. T.T. Need some help? T.T. Pick up Sledgehammer. E.B. What is this thing? And what is the clock counting down to? T.T. I've been looking at the game FAQ walkthroughs to figure some of this stuff out. Hold while I read further. E.B. Okay. T.T. All of these walkthroughs are extremely short. None progress much further than this point. E.B. Weird. Well, I mean, it is a new game. T.T. True. Now that the lid is off, you will need to extrude some cruxite. Turn wheel again. You extrude one cruxite dowel. Get cruxite. TT. I feel like we should be hurrying. That countdown is making me nervous. John? Oh, your PDA is trapped under cruxite now, isn't it? Anyway, it looks like you are going to need this card too. TT. Deploy pre punched card. John, get card. A shard of glass is expelled from the deck and maims the Harlequin doll. Capture log fanciful Harlequins. You take two fanciful Harlequins. The additional useless freight pushes your PDA to the last card. You then switch to the Q modus so you can access the PDA. The glass shrapnel flies from the deck. EB, this thing keeps following me around. I think it's trying to talk to me or something. TT, that is probably the kernel sprite. It apparently needs to be prototyped. Twice, actually. Whatever the hell that means. These walkthroughs are horrendously written. EB, hmm, okay. Well, you're the one with the cursor, so just do whatever you think is the right thing to do. Also, fix my bathroom. TT, drop maimed Harlequin into kernel sprite. The kernel sprite has been prototyped with the Harlequin doll. 
E.B., I still can't understand this thing's gobbledygook. T.T., that was only tier one prototyping. There is still another tier to the prototyping process, which for all we know merely advances this entity through increasingly esoteric states of linguistics. E.B., the clock is ticking. We don't have time for this asinine tomfoolery. T.T., this unmitigated poppycock? E.B., extravagant hogwash. Okay, stop. Stop typing whatever silly thing you're typing. I'm going upstairs to the big platformy thing. T.T. The alchemeter? E.B. What? T.T. Try to learn the lingo. John. Hughes pre-punched card with an alchemeter. There is no slot for a card anywhere to be found on the alchemeter. The Colonel Sprite followed you upstairs. T.T. Explore Athenium. Acquiring a Cruxite doll seems to have populated the Athenium with one item, a perfectly generic object. John, Capsulog Telescope. You snatch the telescope from its tripod. Who knows, it might be useful, but more importantly, it pushes the Cruxite to the last card, making it available for tinkering. The PDA is predictably jettisoned into the yard over the neighbor's fence. John, put Cruxite on weird pattern on alchemeter. You place the Cruxite dowel on the alchemeter's small pedestal. Something is happening. You set the alchemeter to cast three perfectly generic objects, for some reason expending a total of six units of build grist. These things look completely useless. What a waste! Out of the corner of your eye, you notice there's something in the sky. Switch modus and use telescope to inspect sky. You switch back to stack modus and get a closer look with your telescope. Whatever it is, the Colonel Sprite seems particularly agitated about it. You're no astronomer, but its trajectory looks suspiciously head-on with your current perspective. This is a troubling development. High five, Colonel Sprite. You figure you've left him hanging long enough. Attempt to ingest a unit of Bill Grist. It is tempting because they strongly resemble rock and blue raspberry gushers. However, units of Bildgris are a gaming abstraction and do not seem to exist on the physical plane. There is apparently no crisis so imminent that it will deter you from contemplating idiotic and frivolous actions. TT, your dad is getting home. John, what did you do with your PDA this time? I'm working on the bathroom, but we are running low on Bildgris. Revised Bathroom Run to your room and contact TT through Pester Chum. Two chums have been trying to message you. Answer chums. TT I'm working on the bathroom, but we are running low on build grist. EB Oh man, who cares about the bathroom? Now there's a meteor heading for my house. TT I see. Do you suppose it has anything to do with the game? E.B. I don't know. Maybe. What do I do? T.T. I think it's very likely. The walkthroughs vaguely suggest an impending threat before they end. The already poorly constructed sentences become even more curt and ambiguous, as if written heavily with the sense of alarm. Actually, their dedication to updating the walkthrough under such circumstances is admirable. E.B. Wow. Fascinating! Uh? T.T. If the meteor is a game construct, I think the only thing to do is to proceed and try to solve the dilemma on the game's terms. Try using the lathe. It says you can use the card on it, but is it more specific than that? E.B. Okay, I'll do that. T.T. Really, it is a labor to read this drivel. If I read any more, my brain will need to be spoon-fed from a jar while it blows spit bubbles in a high chair. I think I will write my own walkthrough. That is, after we make sure you don't die. Turntech Godhead began pestering ectobiologist at 1734. TG. I heard you got the box. I hope you appreciate my heroic fatherly perseverance in getting it to you. In my rough and tumble, dirty, wife beaterly sort of way. Also, I hope you appreciate how many no talent douches had their mitts on that bunny before you. It's like a grubby baton in some huge douchebag marathon. Hey, where are you? EB. Oh man, the bunny was awesome, but I don't have time to talk. I'm playing Esperb, and it's kind of a nightmare. TT is breaking everything in my house. TG. Dude, I told you to steer clear of that game. And for that matter, you should probably wash your hands of flighty broads and their snarky horse shit altogether. EB. 
And now there's a meteor coming, and I'm not even joking about that. It's like a big asteroid or comet or something in the sky heading right for my house. TG, oh man, how big is it? Evie, I don't know. Big, I guess. I gotta go. We'll talk later if I'm still alive and the Earth isn't blown up. TG, like the size of Texas or just Rhode Island? They're always throwing around these geographical comparisons to give us a sense of scale like it really means anything to us, but it's like, it doesn't matter. It's always just like, wow, that's pretty fucking big. Like, Mr. President, there's a meteor coming, sir. Oh yeah, how big is it? It's the size of Texas, sir. Oh shit, or how big is it? It's the size of New York City, sir. Oh shit, sir, I'm afraid the comet is the size of your mom's dick. Oh snap! Sir, are you familiar with Jupiter? Do you mean, like, the planet? Yeah. Well, it's that big, sir. Hmm, that sounds pretty big. I have a question. Is it Jupiter? Yes, sir. Earth is literally under siege by planet fucking Jupiter. Oh, shit! Anyway, later. Use pre-punched card on totem lathe. You slip the pre-punched card into a slot on the totem lathe. Above the tool arm deploys the configuration of chisels. Now you just need something to lathe. Take Cruxite to totem lathe. Cursing your lack of foresight, you return to the balcony for Cruxite dowel you left on the pedestal. You navigate the hallway leery of your dad, who is presently puzzling over the new fixtures in his hallway. The perfect crime. You retrieve the Cruxite dowel. Dad just shrugs and heads back downstairs, presumably to do some more baking. If only he knew you were hard at work saving his ass. Use Cruxite Dowel on Totem Lathe. You clamp the Cruxite in the lathe. Activate Lathe. The lathe carves one totem. You take the totem. EB. Alright, I used the lathe to make this blue shapey thing. Now I guess I take it back to the Alchemixer again? Hello? Tentacle Therapist is no longer connected. Uh... A young lady stands in her bedroom. Due to a violent storm, her house has just lost power, along with her wireless internet connection. This has severed her link to a popular video game she was playing with a young man at a critical moment. That young man is relying on this young lady to re-establish a connection somehow. This young lady is named... Named... It's on the tip of your tongue. What was the name of this young lady again? Enter name. Flighty Broad. No, that wasn't it. One more time. Rose Lalonde. Examine room. Your name is Rose. As was previously mentioned, you are without electricity, although your laptop computer still functions on battery power. You have a variety of interests. You have a passion for rather obscure literature. You enjoy creative writing and are somewhat secretive about it. You have a fondness for the beastly, strange, and fictitious, and sometimes dabble in psychoanalysis. You also like to knit, and your room is a bit of a mess. And on occasion, if just the right one strikes your fancy, you like to play video games with your friends. What will you do? Retrieve arms from the purple box. The purple package's contents are private. No one is allowed to look inside. Writhe like a flagellum and puke on your bed. Ugh, what a terrible idea. The thought alone makes you sick to your stomach. Stroke writing journal and mutter, My precious. You would only resort to such an embarrassing activity while no one was watching. These journals are for your eyes only. Get violin. You capture log the violin, storing it in the root card of your silodex. Play a haunting refrain on the violin. You waste approximately 40 seconds playing the violin while your friend is in peril. Nice time management skills there, sweetheart. John, tell Liv Tyler you love her before impact. Since your good-for-nothing friend is obviously not going to bail you out in time, you issue words of parting fondness to dear sweet Liv. Oh, if only Affleck could have been the one to make the final sacrifice instead of her stubborn blue-collar salt-of-the-earth father. Then she would fall into your arms for consolation, and you would be the one to make the deceased Bruce Willis proud. Rose. Capsulog Knitting Supply Bag. You get the knitting bag. It occupies the left leaf card under the violin, 
per the tree modest's alphabetical sorting method. K less than V. Lookout window. Your panoramic window offers a view of your yard below, and the mausoleum housing your dead cat Jaspers, who died when you were young. Your mom had the structure erected with the spirit of scornful irony in her response to your youthfully innocent request to hold a funeral for the animal. At least, that is how you have come to interpret the gesture in retrospect. You can also make out a silhouette of the laboratory next door, a facility which likely broadcasts a strong wireless internet signal. You may be able to connect to the signal from a different part of the house. Perhaps if you seek higher ground? Get laptop. You take your laptop and prepare to make the journey through the house. L less than V. L greater than K. This causes the tree to be unbalanced, so your Silodex auto-balances itself. Now the laptop occupies the root card, while the other two items compromise the leaves. K less than L. V greater than L. Examine book on desk. Grimroar for summoning the zoologically dubious. This book is absolutely indispensable for enthusiasts of your ilk, of which there are very few. Take book. You take the grimoire. G less than L, G less than K. Go explore the house. You leave your bedroom. Hanging just next to your door in the hallway is a painting of an exquisite wizard. Your mother collects these awful things ironically. She must know how much you detest them, and there is no doubt in your mind she stores these dreadful things in the house to bother you. Down the hall to the right is the way to the observatory. Perhaps you will be able to connect from up there? Your mother's room is also in that direction. You will have to watch your step. Tiptoe to observatory. You approach juncture in the hallway. Beyond the juncture is the observatory. Sneak by. This door leads up to the observatory. You haven't ventured up there in quite some time. Go through door. The door opens to an exterior walkway leading to the observatory entrance. You've seen less inclement weather before. Oh, the things she'll do to help out a friend. Hurry up to that observatory. Try to connect. You first put your laptop down on the floor to get it situated, but removing it from the root card causes all the branches and leaves to be severed. Your items are dumped unceremoniously to the floor. See what you can observe. You're in a hurry, sure, but that doesn't mean you can't take a moment to peek through the huge telescope. You find a gap in the clouds. It seems a flurry of smaller meteoroids is streaking steadily overhead. You're not sure what this means, but it is somewhat disconcerting. Stack laptop on Grimoire to maximize elevation. You'll need every advantage you can get. Access laboratory Wi-Fi network. There are several signals being broadcasted from the laboratory, each of relatively decent strength. One of them is mysteriously and quite conveniently unsecured, requiring no password. You select the signal and reconnect to the game with John. TT, I'm back. EB, hurry up and open my door. Not that it even matters. I think I'm probably dead no matter what. TT, patience. You still haven't used the new totem. EB, what? TT, I believe it will create the item on the punch card. EB, so what is it, like an apple or something? What good will that even do? TT, we'll see. I found no evidence that anyone has successfully created the item, and the content of the card appears to be variable from session to session. In one instance, it was described as an eggy-looking thing. E.B. Do we have enough of those building jewels to make it? T.T. According to the Athenium, it is a free item. This speaks to its importance in my view. Now off you go. Remove door from hinges. There goes the rest of your build grist. Put bathtub back. You probably should have just done this in the first place. John, take totem to alchemeter. Got to get those stupid blocks out of the way first. The Colonel Sprite is getting awfully worked up about all this. Rose, remove blocks. You store the perfectly generic objects in your Fernalia registry, potentially to be deployed at a later time. John, take bite of apple. 
After watching this flash video, this will be the end of Act 1. So I'm going to stop this here. The next episode is going to be a review episode of Act 1. I'm probably going to start sticking to the archive for um, how I break up my episodes. I'm going to see how well that goes. Uh, so um, it'll just be easier. I don't have to say what page I stopped on or, or started on. You can just go to the archive and, and figure it out from there. Um, or just bookmark it, but just in case something happens. So, um, yeah, I'll have the next episode up in a couple of days. And um, thank you to Andrew Hussey for creating Homestuck. This has been Jax Does Homestuck. And thank you for listening.